Grazie a tutti, cerchiamo Thank you. Thank you, everybody. We uh, wish we could start today as soon as possible. Minister of Foreign Affairs Emma Bonino will be with us shortly to attend this extraordinary event over uh, an important, very important topic. We are here gathering together for the 20th UNSCAB Water and Sanitation Meeting, which has been organized for this very special event with Expo 2015. This is a very significant event for the, both for the contributions and also because uh, works uh, will take place uh, in the presence uh, of the King uh, of the Netherlands. Uh, I would like to leave the floor to uh, Giuliano Pisapia, Mayor of Milan. Good afternoon, everybody, His Majesty, honored ministers. We are waiting for Mrs. Bonino to join us in a few seconds. Authorities, ladies and gentlemen, dear all, Milan is very glad to welcome and he has been done it for the past three days in Palazzo Marino, the municipality, the Palais of the Municipality. So we are hosting the board of the UNSCAB organization. Water has a safeguard of general human being well-being. Water will be, in fact, one of the main topics of Expo Milano 2015, Feed the Planet Energy for Life. On this particular topic, our Universal Exposition will also work in collaboration with the United Nations and relevant agencies in order to process some of the most important answers to some of the most tangible needs that the world will have to cope with from now till 2050. And I'm talking about healthy nutrition that shall be provided to over 9 billion people. And starting from this uh, uh, important topic, of course, we're going to focus and dive on the most important element as water is. Water is a strategic element which is, of course, uh, increasingly covering a more important role also in managing relationships amongst the countries and nations, oftentimes leading to also violent conflicts in some regions of the world. In fact, scarcity of water could actually be, could actually become what the petroleum crisis was up until a few years ago, so a cause of a political and social instability. We can't, uh, of course, uh, take, um, avoid taking this into serious consideration, and this is even more valuable for people who are going to attend and be involved in Expo 2015, talking about aspects such as energy, food. Numbers are very clear and are very worrisome. According to the World Health Organization and the Food and Agriculture Organization, all around the world, one over six people, and I'm talking about 194 million people approximately, are not having access to drinking water. And within 2015, over two billion of planet inhabitants will be living in areas which are going to be considered high risk from a water perspective. And while a um, European citizen is accessing between 200 and 250 litres per day, in some areas of uh, Africa, we are now currently not even touching 20 litres per day. In the light of all that, it is a true honour for Milan to welcome works of the board, of the advisory board of UNSCAB for 
2015. And uh, it is a very important contribution, something that has been required by United Nations and to United Nations in order to cope with this topic and have a best future for the entire planet. It is critical for Milan as well to speak about water as our city, and this is something I'm very proud of. It is a city which is sitting on water on channels, the very popular Navigli Mil Milan. Those channels, even Leonardo da Vinci, the genius, worked on some hundred years ago, some centuries ago. Water is a common good, and it has become one of the most important flagship of the city itself. If uh, Expo could actually, could actually become the showcase of good practices uh, as uh, it should be, Milan will also showcase, as it is already doing, a very important water system that has reported uh, some extraordinary results uh, from, uh, from a saving perspective. A few examples that I would like to share with you to convey a very important message to all of you, to the nation, and to all people that are involved on this delicate topic. Milan water tariff is lower than 50 percent than average tariffs currently existing in other municipalities and regions in Italy. As far as the quality of the service and lab tests which are being performed, every single year over 20,000 samples are being tested on a yearly basis. Milan is also boosting uh, the um, lower rate uh, from, uh, from a wastewater standpoint. And it is truly important for a city such as Milan that it has, of course, based uh, is mainly uh, main, one of the main activities on agricultural. And over 30 percent of water that uh, is being used in Milan, uh, is, it is reused in the agricultural lands. And this also is a topic that will be that will be dealt with by Expo 2015. Of course, it is uh, a topic that, as I said, it is extremely important. Water is a common good, is a commodity that everybody should access to. And from an institutional standpoint as well, from a non-organizational agency standpoint and from a citizen standpoint, it is always stronger requests for water to be paid attention to from the part of everybody. It is also our wish, we do also wish, that shortly we are able to establish one worldwide agency or one single authority as, uh, as a single point of reference to cope uh, with legal, technical, social and political topics and problems and issues connected uh, to something which I said it is important worldwide for the entire planet such as authority, of course, uh, needs to be strongly supported by everybody, including the United Nations. If there were a consensus, and we do realize that it's going to be a very difficult and delicate thing to do, but having said that, if that becomes reality, Milan is ready to play its role, as it's going to do uh, through Expo 2015, drop by drop, step by step. We have to work all together to save the future of the planet and the future generations that will come um, after us. We are pretty sure we're going to be successful in this project. And, uh, we will be able to become a point of reference for a common good and for the, um, for the common well-being, not only for one city, nation, but the entire planet. So once again, thank you, everybody, for your attendance, for your commitment, for your ability to look at and foresee a better future which can guarantee rights of everybody without discrimination 
situation. This will be feasible, this will be possible only if uh, we're going to adopt as a unique point of reference the principle of equality as uh, it is an integral part of every democracy. Have a productive day and I wish you all a very good afternoon. Many thanks to Mayor Pisapia. We are going to be listening now to a very interesting contribution from a very short movie that we have recorded a few hours ago. Uh, we are going to listen to a presentation from, um, from, from Minister, former Minister Romano Prodi chair of the uh, European Union, former chair of European Union, and now special envoy for the Sahel. Romano Prodi has many different times uh, recalled the attention of the entire world to the topic of water, water systems, uh, and we're very honored to listen to his contribution now. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for this invitation to uh, this event, Saving the Future, Drop by Drop. I really apologize for not attending the event in person, but unfortunately, I'm in a constant trouble, and unfortunately, I cannot be here in Milan today. I would like to dive into the topic straight away, though. Water is really becoming the major problem, the major issue in the world. We have some typical areas such as dry lands, desert lands, sub-Saharan Africa, where water has always been poor and scarce. But unfortunately, we always have some new areas where water is increasingly becoming poor and scarce. Large rivers are reaching their mouth, basically dry, and uh, countries and new nations and new needs, uh, um, putting forward and submitting new needs and new requirements and creating new dams. And this, of course, uh, leads to conflicts, potential conflicts. Uh, think about the problem of the Nile, of the Tigris, Euphrates, and let's multiply that by the rivers of Asia. At this point, we, we need, we shall discipline all that. And we shall, above all, regulate the agricultural issue as farmers and agricultural industry is one of the major consumer of water. And of course, we do need uh, the right entity that uh, is now deciding over new irrigation, new technologies. Uh, with new and modern and more sophisticated irrigation technologies, we may now save up uh, nine, nine times as much compared to the past, even even further if we use the very, the very sophisticated ones. And then we have a problem of re recycling as well that we need to take into account. And uh, also, Another problem, which of course requires for clean water, that is the use of domestic, uh, the use of clean water in domestic households. We have millions of people who unfortunately do not have this indispensable uh, resource uh, for mankind and for the planet, entire planet. We do need, and I do envisage one single authority that can gather all these topics, all these issues together a place uh, where this topic and aspects can be studied and processed uh, as tensions are increasing and we are close to an explosion. Now, I've made all this, uh, made all this speech without bearing in mind the consequences connected to the climate change that unfortunately are very significant as well. Those have to be taken into account as well in this major calculation that we're making over the water scarcity. So what's missing in the world? We're, we're lacking a point of reference, a point of Con that, let's say, that creates some kind of a conjunction where all of these topics can be gathered all together and touch based upon. 
I do hope and I do believe also that uh, this conference may prepare may prepare, may get Milan ready to play this new role to uh, try and create this synthesis that we need, putting together operators, decision makers uh, and researchers uh, uh, to tackle this important aspect of water. So I don't believe it is exaggerated to say let's save the future drop by drop, but let's do it fast, let's do it quickly, as we do not have uh, much time left, uh, let's say 10 years from now, and the problem will become a very tragic one, unfortunately. Ecco. Le parole molto serie. Very serious, very felt words, not worrisome, perhaps words from Lomano Prodi really capable to, um, to draw our attention to what we are supposed to do from now on, something that we will dwell into also during Expo 2015. This will be a journey towards 2015 ever since its establishment. We've had uh, uh, General, Secre General Secretary De Sertales, who is um, helping us in uh, talking about this aspect. We're very happy to have him here today, and we look forward to his contribution now. Your Majesty, Honorable Ministers, Distinguished Authorities, Mayor of Milan, ladies and gentlemen, I am very honored to be here today at this 20th United Nations Secretary General's Advisory Board on Water and Sanitation Meeting. Expos inspire a mindset of cooperation, solidarity, and openness, which are essential to tackle the major challenges facing humanity. For visitors and participants alike, Expos offer a much opportunities to experience cultural differences to understand ongoing global efforts and to learn about different paths for future progress. In a world where the channels by which we interact and learn about one another are completely transformed, and in a world where actions have global impact, Expos are called to fulfill a new role, which is potentially more powerful than the one in the past. Today, to be effective platforms for education and progress, Expos must inspire and connect the action of governments and civil society in their common effort to develop and implement sustainable solutions to the universal challenges we all face. Expos build bridges that connect different spheres of society. As such, they help promote ideas and initiatives with new publics. They foster the development of new forms of cooperation. And last but not least, they introduce a degree, a degree of accountability for the actions of governmental institutions and civil societies alike, as we are all called to contribute solutions to our common problems. As early as 1994, our organization passed a resolution stating that future experts have a commitment to respect nature and the environment and to engage civil society with environmental issues by selecting themes based on the main UN agendas. Since the year 2000, there is a strong connection between the selection of expo themes and the main agendas established by the United Nations through different programs and agreements such as the Agenda 20. One from the 1992 Rio Conference, the Kyoto Protocol, and the Millennium Goals. They have, those agendas have inspired Hanover 2000, Humankind, Nature, and Technology, which was the Agenda 21 of the Rio Conference, A New World Arising, Aichi 2005, Nature's Wisdom, which was the Kyoto Protocol, 
Zaragoza 2008, Water and Sustainable Development, and Shanghai 2010, Better City, Better Life. Expo Zaragoza 2008 represented a humanistic, intelligent, and purposeful, purposeful view of a great challenges for humanity, reflecting upon, what, upon water as a basis of life and a strategic resource for development with a firm commitment to sustainability and innovation. The Water Tribune, one of the most remarkable events at the Expo, was an extraordinary platform that united scientists, business leaders, politicians, researchers, writers and citizens to debate on the Expo theme, the water, and contemplate solutions of the existing challenges. Thanks to this forum of international recognition, Expo 2008 united people and ideas to reach a common commitment outlined in the Zaragoza Charter, a world reference in the field of water and sustainable development. With the vocations of continuity and a real commitment to the future, the Spanish government handed over the Charter to the United Nations and to the BIE to promote the Expo legacy. At Expo 2010 Shanghai, the Bureau International des Exposition and the UN worked together hand in hand for the first time. It was a successful experience that has highlighted important synergies that can only strengthen the educational impact of future expos among citizens as well as local and global leaders alike. The culmination of this close cooperation led to the Shanghai Declaration and the Shanghai Manual, a reflection of the thematic wisdom and the cooperative efforts between participants, government, and international organizations that was so prominent at Expo 2010 Shanghai. The legacy of this remarkable event continues today through the government of China, which in cooperation with the BIE is in the process of creating a World Better Cities Day to promote the ideals and values of sustainable urban development, in which water plays a leading role. The BIE has already approved the resolution, which has already received also the approval of UN Habitat before being presented for final approval at the upcoming UN National General Assembly. Expo Yosu 2012 focused on the environmental protection of ocean and coast. Inspired by the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, Yosu 2012 has promoted the need to harmonize development of maritime resources while emphasizing the need to protect the environment and prevent climate change. The universality of this objective has been stressed in Rio Plus 20 that has recognized the pivotal role of oceans to secure a sustainable future. YOSU 2012 has come to represent the necessary missing link between the general public and the work carried out by government, international organizations, universities, and research institutes. The legacy of YOSU 2012 continues today through the YOSU declaration presented by the government of Korea, the BIE, and the United Nations Secretary General, which translated the original visions and aspirations of Expo 2012 into the lessons that were learned before and during the Expo. Milan 2015, with his theme, Feeding the Planet, Energy for Life, will help promote the Millennium Goals. Nutrition is a universal theme. Through the concept of Energy for Life, the Milan 2015 Expo has expressed and captured the full universal scope of food, which in indeed touches all aspects of our existence, health, economy, technology, science, cultural identity, and many other domains in which water plays a, a leading role. As an expo theme, Feeding the Planet, Energy for Life, connects the multiple dimensions of an expo and has the potential to give rise to an event which may or global repercussion. Its many dimensions which intersect the values and objectives of expos, let me cite just a few, food as a key instrument of exchange, food as a reflection of the world we live, food as a tool for democracy and social stability, will make the 
content of the Expo educational and fascinating and advance and develop the objective of the Millennium Goals. Water and sanitation is at the heart of Milan 2015. How can we ensure good, healthy, sufficient and sustainable food for all when water lies more basic necessity is fundamental to the production of food? 70% of the world water was used is dedicated to agriculture, while almost 1 billion people do not have access to reliable and safe supply of drinking water. The framework of Expo 2015 presents a unique opportunity for all the participants, the BIE and, of course, the United Nations, through its pavilion and its continued work on the development of the theme to make an important leap forward in discussions and actions of the international community on this critical issue. As you can see, expos are becoming key assets for governments and international organizations in their effort to communicate to the public the major issues at the top of the global agendas. They are new platforms for multilateral public diplomacy that help fill the existing awareness and knowledge gaps among citizens. They translate complex and high-level concepts into a visual language that is easy accessible to people from all walks of life. They show, they show change by implementing it directly in both material and intangible ways through architecture, urban planning, services, culture and education. I personally look forward to continue the close collaboration that was started at Expo 2010 Shanghai and continued in Expo 2012 Yosu between our organization and the UN, together with the government of Italy and Expo 2015. With the expert cooperation of FAO in this particular issue, I hope that our combined efforts will create a catalyst for the international debate on food and nutrition and as a consequence, water during Expo 2015 and beyond. Thank you. Many thanks to Secretary General of the Bureau International Ladies Exposition. And now I will leave the floor to a lady who has been only for a few weeks Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, and she does no need presentation. As we all know, her efforts and commitments uh, all over the areas around the Mediterranean were so very glad she was able to attend this event. Uh, I leave the floor to Minister of Foreign Affairs of Italy, Emma Bonino. Signore e signori, autorità, signor sindaco, signor commissario, dear friends, your majesty, my dear friend. It's really nice to see you here. And I hope that you will see that we really want to join forces to a subject to which you have dedicated so much commitment and so much energy, water. And I really salute your presence and we really want to join forces. We want that Expo we really focus on this uh, subject. Thank you for being here. Signore e signori, sono veramente contenta di partecipare a I am so very glad to take part to the 20th advisory board of water and sanitation. And I am so very glad as well that the advisory board that has welcomed the proposal of Italian government to organize in Milan and together with Expo 2015 this unique event. I would like to thank in particular the King of the Netherlands. To His Majesty, we're also very grateful for the honor that we are being reserved 
thanks to his attendance and for having significantly contributed to uh, make the debate uh, over the sustainable management of water resources proceed. Uh, by the way, who better of the Dutch people knows the virtues and threats of water? Also, thanks to the input that you have provided in the last few years, access to water and to basic sanitation has evolved from a, a noble idea to a right of man as that has been recognized by the General Assembly of United Nations and by the Board of Man Rights. The action of advisory board has stimulated and uh, invited government, international organization and non-governmental organizations, development banks to work all together to tackle and to hit the objective of the millennium over the environmental sustainability and to have within 2015 a percentage of people who still do not have access to drinking water and basic sanitation. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Your Majesty, we do have a, a saying in Italy that recitate as simple as drinking a glass of water. Still, such a simplicity is still being considered as a something very luxurious for some 783 million people who still don't have access to drinking water. And to them, this is not simple. This is not easy. And we're talking about 2.5 billion people who do not have access to sanitation services. So for those of you who want to provide hope to children that are even, that are even passing away due to this problem, due to problems connected to the contaminated water, this is really an essential issue. It is also an issue as it, it is allows us to guarantee safety and security if it's true that scarcity of water and tensions that it's often generated amongst nations uh, oftentimes uh, are being tackled uh, by diplomacies. For instance, we cannot understand to its full uh, the Israel-Palestinian relations unless we're able to understand that the Gaza Strip and the Jordan River Basin are from the are in are some of the areas in the world with the highest rates uh, growth rates of population and lower quantity of water per head and uh, the agenda the agenda for water shall be an integral part uh, of our foreign policy. As I said, uh, it has to be an, an integral part uh, of our foreign policy. As an agenda for the water, it means agenda for peace, for social inclusion, for rights and for development. Investing in water also means to foster growth will very difficultly the General Assembly of United Nations could have been more timely in declaring 2013 as the international year over, co over cooperation for the water sector. And it is as appropriate as the decision of Expo Milan to highlight ever since from the beginning into the water as main topic of the, of the exhibition and the exhibition sites. Within the project of participation, nations will be invited to express in their own view their perspective over water and uh, I would like to uh, express my gratitude to Minister of the China, a nation that is strongly investing on importance of water and the sector. And also visitors uh, will be involved in uh, journeys and debates uh, tackling uh, the same topic. Unique Commissioner Giuseppe Sala will show us the role of water at the exposition sites as well as the main points uh, of the strategy that have been, has been processed uh, so far by Expo Milan. I only would like to emphasize and highlight that the choice of Expo, it is uh, entirely 
chaired by the Italian government, knowing that the exposition will offer a unique opportunity to Italy and many participants to contribute to such an important global debate uh, around this uh, uh, vital and key aspect. And I believe, uh, as the speaker before me has anticipated, uh, that uh, today's meeting is a very fast, tangible signal. Also, I would like to seize this opportunity to anticipate that Italy has a, has a favorable orientation to include potential um, amongst potential sustainable development goals, also one specific objective on water and uh, basic sanitation services. Also, we would like to sustain the proposal of the advisory board to introduce some specific targets amongst the other sustainable development goals in order to monitor and ensure a sustainable management of water resources. And since water for us uh, shall definitely play a, a greater role in the development agenda post-2015, topic will still be priority also in, in, in action plans which are being processed and pursued by the Italian cooperation. We believe, we feel this is a very um, important approach that shall be tackled in an integrated manner. Also, the final document around the conference Rio Plus, Rio Plus 20 shows that uh, sustainable management of um, water resources uh, shall be necessarily connected to other crucial elements such as uh, nutrition, food safety, rural development, uh, and growing demand for energy. And I'm also firmly convinced that the topic of water is uh, strictly connected to other global challenges, uh, and it cannot be solved, uh, no tackled uh, as a sectorial aspect. Uh, it is part of uh, climate change, uh, of uh, healthcare, and also equality of uh, gender an aspect that I will touch base in a moment. And it is also very natural for me. I have invested a lot of time and passion in fighting against a famine and for the rights of women. It is, as I said, natural for me to connect together nutrition, water, and women. For those of you and for those of us who are involved in uh, two women's aspects uh, in the nations where the rights of women are often uh, not so much taken into account in areas where there's famine, where women have been humiliated by hunger, starvation, and scorching drought, so you all realize uh, that fighting against um, all of these aspects uh, in order for these conditions to improve are essential also for economic and political and development overall. And this is the sense that we wanted to convey to Expo Milan 2015, as women are not only involved in the household matters, but they also very sensitive to topic to aspects such as nutrition and uh, aliment and um, and uh, and important food. food uh, uh, safety. I'm looking at Lady Bracco. Has uh, she's been? Uh, she has been so much involved from the very beginning. We have thought uh, about Expo as a unique opportunity. Let's say to empower women even further. There are so many examples uh, showing relationship, special relationship between women, food, and water. I would like to remind all of you a crucial case of some women from Sudan. They were able to overcome a negotiation stale in Darfur just by simply showing that the river whose fate uh, negotiators uh, were fighting against uh, was actually dry. There was nothing to fight to fight for any longer. Women knew that uh, differently from negotiators, uh, as uh, to them, to their daily life, uh, that had proven to be essential. Not it was not just a mere principle. 
And maybe many of you will also remember the, the title of a movie, and now where are we heading to? Talking about um, kitchen and cuisine methods where brave women from a Lebanon village were able to prevent violent fights and battles amongst their women, amongst their men. And the reason why I'm saying that is because there is a strong correlation association amongst these two aspects. In a time of ideological contrasts and sectarian fanaticism, sharing food may also bring people together. So, Mr. Commissioner, I would like, by working with you and working with all of you, I would like to make Expo as, um, as a very pleasant and joyful party where cultures are all integrating with one another. When I say joyful, it means it's looking at the future without forgetting the present and without forgetting what are the roots and what is our heritage. Still, we have to be able to look forward, a role of science without demonizing that and uh, making sure, ensuring, uh, ensuring people are able to respect and totally fulfill what they believe, what they believe are cultures. Uh, there's no future uh, if we're not aware of our heritage, of our legacy, and there's no future if we only look at our roots also. So roots and legacy are there to make a tree stronger, for this tree to deliver fruits and flowers. And only if we're doing this all together, we'll be able to help. I'm also convinced that um, the uh, flavor, the tastes of uh, dish and processing methods and storage and cooking uh, ways are also reflecting the habits and tradition of an entire population. Therefore, for millions of visitors to which Milan will open doors to, uh, doing things together, very common gestures such as eating and drinking, may prove to be may prove to become a very special way to get to know other cultures and also respect their cultures. I believe that this important message of tolerance and integration is being widespread to the entire world from Milan, a very warm and welcoming metropolitan city, center of gravity of Europe, and place of creativity and imagination, capable to say who Italians are, what, who, what can we do, what is our entrepreneurship like. But there's also something that really helps us a lot, is having a date. When we have a date in Milan, and in Italy, generally speaking, we are kind of slow at the beginning. And we do sometimes take things in a slowly manner. But when we have a deadline to hit, we know how to reach that. But we all have to run towards the same direction because it is meaningless to run towards a destination without reaching all the same destination. And uh, Last, also because we are close to the objectives of the Millennium, Expo on Milan is also an opportunity to debate and make considerations over the programs that the international community has adopted and on those that it shall adopt in order to considerate and improve the results that will be achieved in 2015. It's not by chance that the United Nations were amongst the first to adhere to Expo, and that was an occasion for them, for United Nations to show what they have done and what they're currently doing to tackle the objectives of the millennium. I would like to confirm strong commitment from the Italian government, which is a tangible signal that in such a difficult moment in time where resources are very poor, where if there's one, uh, if there's one aspect that hasn't been dropped down is the Expo one. And I just, leave you, I just leave it to your imagination to think how difficult it was and how meaningful can this become. To me, 
life is long, world is short, but life can be also bizarre. And it is uh, a very, a very unique emotion uh, to take care of Expo. I have been uh, a strong support uh, during the campaign for candidacy, and I'm actually seeing here so many well-known faces than I was uh, committed in some other aspects of it. But of course, the commitment to Expo, Expo Women is still here in my mind. And I'm here covering this, uh, maybe one of the last portion of this journey in the role of Minister of, uh, of Foreign Affairs. And I'm honored. I know it is a deadline for the entire country. And as far as I am confirmed, it is uh, an important piece uh, of the puzzle, also standing as a priority for my ministry, the diplomacy of growth. But in order to do so, we need uh, all of you. So thank you so much for your attention. This applause shows that the speeches by the government can raise enthusiasm this time round. And thank you, Minister Bonino, for your important comments and for your enthusiasm. And thank you for reminding us some of the features of Italians that we shouldn't forget with a view to the Expo. The extraordinary international dimension of the avenue to Milan 2015 is shown also by the speeches that will follow, starting from that of the Minister of Water Resources of the People's Republic of China, Chen Lei, and it is a great pleasure and honor for us to listen to him. Welcome to Milan. Your Majesty King William Alexander, Your Honorable Minister Bonino, Your Honorable Mayor Pisapia, Acting Chair Ms. Wuxi, Dear Wunscap Members, Distinguished Delegates. Your Xing Chuxi, Shi Bo Hui, Shui Zhan Lie Chi Dong Yi Shi, Wo Gan Dao Fei Chang Rong Xing. It is a great honor for me to be invited to attend the launching ceremony of, Mina of Expo Milano Water Strategy. I would hereby congratulate on this successful launching ceremony and express our sincere appreciation to the municipal government of Milan and the Expo Milano Organizing Committee for hosting the 20th Wunscap meeting. Milan is a history and history and Wei Milan is a world-famous city with a long history and a splendid culture. Milan it is also the business and commercial center of Italy, with an overarching theme of feeding the planet energy for life. Expo Milano focuses on drinking water safety, food supply, food safety and other sustainable development issues of worldwide concern. It is of great significance for promoting communication and cooperation among different countries 
pushing forward the implementation of water strategy and tackling challenges of water, food, and energy security. China has a saying, "Water is the highest good, and water is the highest good." Obtaining healthy, safe, and abundant water is the basic right of every human being. Under the current social development, the rise of population, 以及全球气候变化的影响，全球水资源形势日趋严峻，水危机日益凸显。An old saying in China goes like this: People regard food as their prime want, and water is essential for food production. Access to healthy, safe, and adequate food and water is the basic right of everybody on Earth. Due to the impacts of socio-economic development. Population growth and global climate change. The situation of global water resources is is increasingly grim, and water crisis is becoming more prominent. One is the water security issue very strongly. Over 到四百万人死于因水传播的疾病。二是水资源供需矛盾日益尖锐。过去五十年间，全球取用水量增加了三倍，地下水开采量增加了两倍。到二零三零年，百分之四十七的世界人口将居住在用水高度紧张的地区。First. Problems of safe drinking water are exceptionally serious. More than half of the countries and the regions around the world do not have adequate, improved drinking water. Nearly one billion people do not have access to safe drinking water. About three to four million people die from waterborne diseases every year. Second, the imbalance between water demand and supply is worsening. In the past 50 years, water withdrawal worldwide quadrupled. And the withdrawal of groundwater tripled. By 2030, 47% of world population will live in regions with high water stress. Three is the environmental climate changing constantly. The world's annual annual water supply reaches 4,000 million gallons, causing 5,000,000 gallons of water to be polluted. 因缺水而变成荒漠。四是水灾害频发多发，全球气候变化导致极端天气增加。近十五年间，全球共发生较大洪涝、干旱灾害三千三百多起，占全部自然灾害的百分之六十四。Third, aquatic ecosystem is deteriorating. Wastewater discharge has reached an annual volume of more than 400 billion cubic meters, polluting more than 5 trillion cubic meters of water bodies. Approximately 6 million hectares of land were turned into desert every year for the lack of water. Fourth, water-related disasters occur more frequently. Global climate change leads to an increase of extreme weather events. In the past 15 years, more than 3,300 big floods and droughts occurred globally, accounting for 64 percent of total natural disasters. 针对日益突出的水问题，国际社会和世界各国纷纷寻求对策、付诸行动。联合国把水资源列为本世纪全球重点关注和着力解决的。五大领域之首，联合国秘书长、水与卫生顾问委员会长期致力于实现水与卫生千年发展目标，积极倡导水、粮食和能源纽带关系。欧盟颁布实施水框架指令，大力推动流域水资源综合管理。In order to cope with increasingly prominent water problems, international community and countries around the world are seeking effective strategies and taking prompt actions. 
The United Nations have, li have listed water at the top of five pressing world issues, necessitating global attention and solution in this century. WONSCAP has been making long-term efforts in advancing MDG on water and sanitation and advocating the water, food and energy nexus approach. EU promulgated and rigorously implemented the EU Water Framework Directive in order to promote integrated river basin water resources management. China government has been addressing the water problem for years and has solved three million people in the water problem. In the past six years, it has achieved the goal of achieving the UN Water and Water Resources Framework Directive in the next 10 years, and to strengthen the water system. 大力发展现代灌溉技术，实现粮食总产连续九年增长，加快大江大河治理和防洪薄弱环节建设，有效应对水灾害，实行最严格的水资源管理制度，全面推进节水型社会和水生态文明城市建设。The Chinese government has always attached great importance to water issues. In recent years, China has successfully overcome drinking water difficulties for more than 300 million rural residents and achieved MDG on water and sanitation six years in advance. Furthermore, China has strengthened the construction of agricultural irrigation and drainage facilities and promoted modern irrigation technologies and ensure the increase of grain output for nine consecutive years. Moreover, China has speeded up the training of major rivers and lakes, strengthened the weak links of flood prevention system, and effectively defended against water disasters. In addition, the Chinese government is implementing the most stringent water resources management system and promoting the development of a water-saving society and urban water ecological progress in a comprehensive manner. 解决水问题需要全球携手，共同努力。一要保障水供给，为生活饮水、农田灌溉、工业生产、经济社会发展提供安全、充足的水资源保障；二要防治水灾害，构建防灾减灾综合体系，最大程度降低洪涝和干旱。灾害损失，三要保护水生态，强化水土资源保护，维护河湖健康生命；四要改善水环境，推进水污染防治，提升污水处理与回用水平；五要加强水管理，规范水资源开发行为，促进水资源集约、节约和高效利用。To solve water problems requires global cooperation and concerted efforts. First, we should safeguard water supply in order to provide safe and adequate water for domestic use, farmland irrigation, industrial production and socio-economic development. Second, we should prevent and manage water-related disasters. An integrated system of disaster prevention and mitigation should be established in order to minimize the damage caused by flood and drought disasters. Third, we need to protect aquatic ecosystem, enhance the protection of water and soil resources, and maintain the healthy life of rivers and lakes. Fourth, we should improve water environment. Water pollution control and prevention should be promoted, and the capacity of wastewater treatment and reuse should be improved. Fifth, we should strengthen water management. Water resources exploitation should be regulated, and economic and efficient use of water should be promoted. We believe the Milan Water Conservation Alliance will further improve the water problem. 在国际议程中的地位，进一步凝聚国际社会对水安全重要性的共识。我们愿意与世博会、组委会密切合作，共同推动水战略的实施，共同促进水资源的可持续利用。
We firmly believe that Expo Milano will further elevate the status of water on the international agenda and foster a global consensus on the importance of water security. We are ready to work closely with Expo Milano Organizing Committee in order to promote the implementation of water strategy and to realize the sustainable utilization of water resources. 最后, 预祝2015年, Finally, I wish Expo Milano 2015 a great success. 谢谢大家. Thank you. Thank you so much to Minister Cheng Lei. Now, for the first part of our works, we have Ushi Aid, Uzgamba Acting Chair, with a huge experience with respect to international relations, in particular with Africa. She's been head of the German delegation, so it's a pleasure for us to listen to her. Your Majesty, King Willem Alexander, Ministers, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen, dear colleagues, it is truly an honor to address this gathering on behalf of the Secretary General's Advisory Board on Water and Sanitation. We are grateful for being invited to share our experience and to listen to your suggestions. I sincerely thank the government of Italy through you, Madam Minister, and Expo Milano for the generous invitation to host our board's 20th meeting here in Milan. Your Milano 2015 water strategy outlines the key role that water plays to feed the planet and to secure energy. On behalf of our board, I do applaud the wise decision of those responsible for choosing a theme that encapsulates the biggest challenges facing humanity. In 710 days, people from all over the globe will gather in this beautiful city to celebrate human progress. Participants at Expo Milano will experience first-hand innovations in water management, water reuse, drip irrigation, and wetland purification systems will be on display, showing people what is possible to secure sufficient water supply for sustainable food production. With the demand for water, energy, and food growing at tremendous rates, the pressure on natural resources is at an all-time high. A more sustainable path with re which recognizes interlinkages between these three sectors must be followed. Just this morning, our board discussed how to advance water, food, energy nexus approaches with representatives from FAO, UN Energy and UN Water. We are pleased to see that the Expo Milano organizers are effectively linking water, food and energy challenges. Ladies and gentlemen, with your Expo and its theme, Feeding the Planet, Energy for Life, you will mark a milestone in 2015. 2015 also represents the end point of the Millennium Development Goals. These goals are time-bound objectives for poverty reduction, edu education, gender equity, health and environmental sustainability. They are a framework uniting the UN family and development partners to make a push to end poverty globally. As Minister Chen Lei mentioned, the drinking water challenge remains a global priority. For sanitation, the picture is even more daunting. We continue to live in a world where 2.5 billion people lack proper toilets. M Madam Minister, you mentioned this figure already. 
This is absolutely unexcusable and intolerable. At current rates of progress, the sanitation target won't be met until 2026. Why do we not see better progress? Different experts will offer different explanations. But this much is clear. Politicians, leaders and people in general, worldwide, simply don't like to be associated with toilets. This stigma influences international and national development agendas. We have to continually fight to keep sanitation at the center of development discussions. So often coupled with water issues, sanitation receives significantly less attention and resources. We hope that also in this respect, the Milano Expo will be a vanguard and a partner to tear down the taboo that is hiding aspects of the dirty side of water. The international community is now designing the post-2015 development framework. Our board is advocating for a standalone post-2015 water goal composed of three essential elements. And Madam Minister, if I listen carefully, you are really dedicated and we have you as an ambassador to push Europe-wide for our goal. Um, at the heart of this uh, water goal is universal access to drinking water and sanitation. We must strive for a world where every child and every adult has ready access to these two essential services. The MDG targets for water and sanitation have set us in the right direction. In reaching universal access, we will realize the UN General Assembly resolution to make both sanitation and water a basic human right. Ladies and gentlemen, we cannot have reliable supplies of drinking water if water is not managed efficiently. That is why improved water management is the second aspect of our global water goal. Recently, the OECD projected that the number of people living in seriously threatened river basins will double between 2000 and 2050 in the face of inaction. This would mean that in less than 40 years from now, almost 4 billion people could live in seriously compromised river basins. And another concerning trend, water-related disasters are becoming both less predictable and more intense in the face of climate variability. The built resiliency to this growing threat means improving the infrastructure, policies and human capacity to manage our water resources. The third element in our call is to improve wastewater management and pollution prevention. Rough estimates suggest that 80 to 90 percent of wastewater in developing countries is discharged into rivers, lakes and seas causing waterborne diseases and severely damaged ecosystems. As our former chair was fond of reminding us, there is no wastewater, only water that is wasted. My fellow board member, Mrs. Ketley Carlson, will speak to this issue shortly. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank both the government of Italy and the Expo Milano for graciously hosting our meeting here in Milan. We are lucky to have Giorgio Giacomelli on our board, a devoted diplomat who has served the United Nations in many capacities throughout his career. Milan is yours, your Giorgio's home, and we are very simply delighted to be here today. Allow me to address His Majesty King Willem Alexander, our board's former chair. As this is possibly the last encounter between your majesty and your former board, let me say this. All of us on the board were delighted to learn that you would become the king of the Netherlands. I'm convinced to speak for all members of the board when I say we were also not a bit 
I, I wanted to say a bit, but it's more than a bit said to know that our chair would move on to other responsibilities. We have had the distinct pleasure to work with you, Your Majesty, over almost seven years in our quest to extend drinking water and sanitation services to those in desperate need. We know you as a compassionate, tireless, bright and devoted man. I would like to thank Your Majesty from the bottom of my heart for contributing your time, energy and power to improve access to drinking water and particularly to bringing proper toilets to the billions still in need. I would like to thank Your Majesty for joining us here today. Due to other commitments in the Netherlands, His Majesty must leave us now. Your Majesty, we will truly miss having you as our chair. However, we remain resolved to carry on the critical work that we have taken forward together. Goodbye and all the best. Special thanks to Mrs. Oski for her passionate speech. So we would like to thank Her Majesty, King of the Netherlands, who is now leaving the event. Thank you so much, His Majesty, for being here today. Of course, uh, our works will continue. I'm leaving the floor to Commissioner General for UN, Eduardo Briales. Excellency Emma Bonino, Ministra della Paresteri dell'Italia, Honorable Minister Chen Lei of Water Resources in China, Honorable Giuliano Pisapia, Mayor of Sindaco de Milano, Signor Vicente González Los Certales, Secretary General of the Bureau of International Expositions, Honored Speakers and Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, Buongiorno, Good Afternoon. After so, exciting speeches is difficult to draw your attention in this moment. It is a very special honor to participate today in this very important event in which the water strategy of Expo is being presented. In fact, it is my first public act since the Secretary General of the UN nominated me UN Commissioner General for Expo 2015. This event takes place in the frame of the United Nations Secretary General Advisory Board on Water and Sanitation official session. The two issues that gather us here in Milano today, water and food, were identified as two of the seven key global challenges during Rio Plus 20 conference, and they are an integral part of the Expo Milano 2015 theme, Feeding the Planet, Energy for Life. In 2013, we celebrate the International Year of Water Cooperation. Many opportunities exist to show how water is linked to maintaining a healthy environment, one that provides clean water for sustaining human health and food secure environments. The Rome based UN agencies, FAO, IFAD, and World Food Programme, are focused on feeding the planet and providing energy for people around the world. Within the UN system, we aim to do so. Uh, this through the implementation of the UN Secretary General's Zero Hunger Challenge. This global goal is integrated into the first, very first objective of FAO's new organization framework, strategic framework, which focuses on providing food security and adequate nutrition for all. We are committed to meet this goal given the extraordinary urgency it conveys, and very particularly in Africa. But how urgent is it? In the case of food, and despite substantive improvement in the reduction of the share of undernourished people, the amount of them in the world is still around 800 million, and 800 million too much. 
The growth of the world population from 7 billion people now to 9 billion in 2050 is expected to add an additional 60% demand for food. The right to food is an inherent human right, and not all humans have this right at the present, nor do they have access to nutritious food. But there are positive news. Today, we produce enough food for all if access and food waste would be addressed. The most important change in global diets is a shift to the Western diet, which entails a higher share of animal protein. Such diets increase the cereal demand for animal feed. Animal-based diets are resource intensive and if not developed in using an intersectoral, low energy and consumption approach, they can result in overuse of land and water resources. Africa holds the most relevant potential growth of agricultural productivity, though such productivity would require significant improvement in the continents, governance and tenure arrangements, water availability, as well as decisive actions to slow climate change. Moreover, we presently waste one third of food because of the way it is processed and consumed. A significant reduction of food waste would contribute enormously to achieve food security for all. In addition, unconventional foods that act as meat substitutes, such as protein-rich vegetables, fish from aquaculture or insects, may make a significant contribution to food security. We need to think creatively about how to solve such complex challenges, and these are just a few ways in which we can start taking action. Food security and nutrition challenges show significant similarities to those of water, just presented by the acting chair. Demand for water resources will increase substantially as the population and its living standards grow. As the population growth is concentrating mostly in dry countries, availability of water will challenge access to clean water and sanitation for millions of people. And this was here highlighted by the example expressed by Minister Bonino a few minutes ago. Africa is the continent with less water resources and most potentially affected by climate change. Swift actions need to be taken on the continent to reduce the threat of water scarcity and drought. We recall the horrors of the 2011 Horn of Africa crisis and must work to build resilience in countries where food availability and water resources are fragile. This is why the Expo Milano 2015 strategy on water is timely. The answers both to food and water challenges are interlinked and require global action for which the UN system and the supporters of Expo Milan 2015 are best placed. By utilizing and replicating innovative rainwater harvesting, soil water conservation, rangeland and watershed management techniques, many countries can improve their qualitative and quantitative availability of water resources and pave the way for food secure environments. Decision making on integrated water management should be based on sound research adapted to local conditions. A significant part of the answer, though not all, will come from technology. The best available technologies need to be applied in order to reduce water demand and recycle the much of water we use. Decisive actions, ongoing technological development and improvement to improve communication need to follow in order to successfully implement this strategy. Energy and climate change show a strong connection to food and water. The single way to cope with the climate change challenge is to optimize the mitigation capacity of ecosystems, basically through the restoration and sustainable management of forests, energy consumption reduction, and substitution of non-renewable energy sources by renewable biological, biomass, or physical energy, solar, wind, or sea. We should recall that CO2 is responsible for three quarters of the greenhouse gases, and that the world vegetation stores roughly the same amount of carbon than the entire atmosphere. All this can foster green growth, including a push for green building using more wood and bamboo, and by this substituting intensive non-renewable resources that can so reduce enormously the carbon emissions. We also need to consider the health aspects of water and food. We all know 
nutritious diet, diets, and clean water are essential to our health. The World Health Organization encourages us to focus much more on the food we eat and the lifestyles, lifestyles we maintain in order to improve our health conditions. The World Health Organization advises us to increase the amount of vegetables, fruit and fish in our diets and reduce the intakes of sugar, fats and animal protein typical of a Western diet. FAO will strengthen its work with the health, World Health Organization to build these connections in our food security and nutrition goals. We know that sugar and fats have been the drivers of increased food prices, particularly during the second food crisis in 2011, and they are a main reason for the increasing obesity in many developed but as well developing countries. If we are able to see the challenges in the interconnectivity, many win-win opportunities might be identified. As we begin to move forward for Expo 2015, we, may, we need to make a few basic acknowledgements. First, access to food and water must be acknowledged as a key milestone to human progress. Second, the moderate growth of the population and the growing trend to urbanization also opens new opportunities due to the phasing out of subsistence agriculture that would not offer a way out of poverty. Third, we acknowledge that Western consumption patterns cannot be replicated to sustain 9 billion people on one planet. Our challenge is how to assure access to sufficient food and water and energy to all while doing in a sustainable way. And there is one key but often overlooked equation element that is land. Land use approaches need to integrate the productive aspects disaster risk reductions, value-added activities, employment, biodiversity, soil and water management, and landscape values. The best agricultural land should not be lost due to urban expansion and for constructions of new infrastructures. The UN engagement with its partners at Expo 2015 has an aspiration to leave a legacy to the future of food so that it is accessible to all ending hunger and it will be done in an innovative a horizontal way, not with a European pavilion, but with an, a deep cooperation with Expo 2015 in the thematic and uh, zero pavilion to highlight the contribution of the UN to the issues of food. I would like also to highlight that in 2015, many elements align in time. The end of the Millennium Development Goals, as we know them today, they will be ending in 2015. The new Sustainable Development Goals that we also commented will start in 2015, or at least be defined then. The Climate Change Agreement is expected to be closed in 2015. And, and regarding to the high advocacy of Minister Bonino to the gender issue, the celebrations of Beijing Plus 20, the first ever big meeting on the situation of women, will be also celebrated in 2015. I am pleased to be uh, here present for the launch of the Expo Milano 2015 strategy on water as it shows the integral linkage water makes in providing food secure environments. For sure this will help us form the future we want, one without hunger and with the resources needed to sustain life on earth. I believe the high level of attention given to these topics here today shows a shared commitment and momentum to overcome the described challenges in the future. I would invite you to take from your experience in Milan the ability to inspire the action needed for a food and water secure world when many still do not have access to it. Only if we are able to face the water and food challenges from a 360 degree perspective will, we be, will it be possible to overcome them for the sake of human progress. Grazie mille per la vostra attenzione. Thank you. Thank you. Now we have Margaret Catley Carlson, Vice Chair of the Canadian Water Network, and it's a great pleasure for us to listen to her. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Thank you. That 
That's a big step, the third one, so watch it. Emma didn't arrive like this, so uh, um, good afternoon. Uh, now that I've really got your attention, uh, I'm very pleased to be here and let me join with others who have expressed enormous thanks for the hospitality of Milan, Italy, of the Expo Commission, uh, particularly allowing the UN UNSCAB board uh, the possibility of having a meeting here to join with you in launching what's going to be a very exciting, uh, a very exciting expo. You've already heard about us, our board, so I won't talk about that. But I want to do something different because you've heard facts, figures, the statistics on why water, food, land, all of this is important. What I want to do is make you excited about one, of the, one or two of the themes that you could really develop in the 2015 Expo and really make very exciting. So that's what I'm going to do, and uh, because you've had the whole background from some, some very excellent speakers. Who comes to Expos? Well, people that are interested in innovation, uh, actors who are wanting to learn about the most promising developments, so in other words, people that want to see what's new and what's coming up on the horizons, and also those who are interested in revolutionary ideas. So what's new in water? Is there anything potentially revolutionary or anything really innovative? What could we offer to change makers who will gather by the thousands in Milan? Well, here's what's new, and the last speaker just talked about it, and it's called water reuse or recycling. Now, it's brand new. It's only been going on for billions of years. So uh, it's something that is absolutely, uh, absolutely change-making. It's the basis, of course, of the water cycle. You have rain, which then flows, sits in lakes or rivers, seepage, then use, far too often accompanied by pollution, uh, then evaporation or evapotranspiration, if it's part of the 70% of the water that we use and produces our food. Uh, and then back to the ocean or glacier. Um, then it rains again. Thanks to climate change, as the temperatures get hotter, it often rains more than it used to. So every molecule we use has been through a dinosaur. It's been through a glacier. It's been through several oceans, several thousands of human beings. I promise you that. Trees, aquifers, and so on. So, how these get cleaned, these molecules, is about energy. The sun, gravity, chemistry, that kind of energy of modern techniques. It takes energy to clean water. And whether it's natural energy or other energy, it takes energy to clean water. So what's new? Oh, I'm delighted the Director General is here because I'm going to make you excited about something that I really want to see uh, Expo 2015 uh, have a very good look at. So what's new? Why should we make Milan 2015 excited about something that's been going on for billions of years? It's this. The idea that a water reuse revolution is being, must be, and can be accelerated if we extend the benefits and reduce the energy required. Why do we need new sources of water? Well, you've been hearing about this. There's a serious water emergency. It isn't an emergency 10 years from now, it's an emergency now, not in our part of the world, but a spreading emergency. 70% of our rivers are already overextended, mostly because of agricultural use. Lake Chad, Lake Victoria, Tigris, Euphrates, every day we read about more dismal um, hydrological prospects. 30% of the world's population is moving towards serious water stress. And something people haven't talked about today, mines, industries, agricultural development, is being constrained by the, the non-availability of water. And in a world in which youth unemployment and unemployment generally is a huge problem, this is a very serious issue. We need the water to make the industrial machines go. We need to feed about two billion more people and more than that number, and if we need to do it right, we get it right. But how does reuse fit into this? Well, let's start to look at some of the good examples. Jordan is now reusing 90% of municipal wastewater and treats it and then uses it for agriculture. This is reusing and recycling. 
China has been doing this for a very long time. Minister Chen Li start to, talked about this and the role that this kind of recycling and reuse plays. In many countries of the world, the reuse of treated wastewater and wastewater is essential to the nutrition of the people. There's a huge potential difference for the billions who currently don't enjoy the benefits of wastewater treatment too. If we can start to use wastewater, recycle it, use it, use it as a resource, the same 800 million people with food access constraints might actually have better access to sanitation because it would pay countries and cities and areas to start recycling and reusing water. So we can start to change this. So above all, we need to find new sources of water. The, world, the water is overusing lakes, rivers, and groundwater. When you reuse water, when you stop doing things like washing cars and sidewalks with drinking water, and when you reuse the water that you use for the essential parts, it means you're not taking that water out of lakes, rivers, etc. You are, in fact, extending the amount of water you have and using the same water over and over again before you release it into the sea, into the river, or into evapotranspiration. It's the cheapest way of getting new water. It's cheaper than desalination. It takes about one-third of the energy that desalination takes to actually clean brackish water or wastewater that is not too significantly damaged. The more, energy, the more dirtier it is, the more energy we actually need to use. But if we do it right, we can pull energy also out of some kinds of water that, when we treat it for reuse. Energy can be captured from wastewater. In fact, according to a recent study by Newcastle Engineering, average wastewater contains 7.6 kilojoules per liter, which is about 20% higher than what we, knew, we estimated before. New water reuse treatment plants offer to meet all or a major part of the energy they need. What does that mean in, in real language? It used to be that when a city like Milan or any other city uh, contracted for a new um, treatment water treatment plant, then it was assumed that the energy would have to come from outside sources, usually from thermal, from hydro, from available electricity. Now, an increasing part of the energy to run the wastewater treatment plant comes from the use of the wastewater itself. Now, that is quite a large revolution, depending on how successfully you carry that along. And if the rest of the energy required can come from non-conventional sources of energy, you really start to have both the energy revolution that you want to talk about and the water revolution. So these things can actually start to work together. Uh, there are some fairly revolutionary ideas. For quite a long time, UNSCAB, our board, has insisted that improving and expanding reuse up to and including wastewater management is a necessary solution for the future. We pushed for an international agreement from uh, with, with using His Majesty's willingness to talk about subjects that, as he said today, his mother and father told him never to discuss, particularly not at the table. And he said, these are subjects we have to discuss everywhere, including at the table. Uh, and he, once, once you break through the barrier and start talking to ministers about sanitation toilets and what happens afterwards, then you can really start looking at all these things as potential resources to solve the issues and the problems that we actually are encountering today. So we, UNSCAB, pushed for an international agreement from the Istanbul, forward, uh, Istanbul Forum onward. We got mayors and ministers to say, yes, we've got to start looking at this. We've worked with regional banks. We've talked about something that the minister talked about, monitoring and really, really starting to take account of how much wastewater and how much water is actually moving into reuse and what the potential of this is. It's really a very exciting source of new water. We urged UN Water to study the costs and benefits of the current approaches and we're really convinced that if sanitation and water treatment stops at the toilet, Multiple benefits that we know come from good sanitation will not be realized. What are some of the good things we're missing on? Well, some of them will really quite astound you. Um, I was fascinated to discover that you can, I knew that you could take any kind of uh, something that produces biological waste and use a natural system like a reed bed to do the water cleaning. 
So that means you can take a brewery and you can take all the waste coming out of a brewery and you can actually use it there. But did you know you could do the same thing for an abattoir? As long as the wastes are biologic, you can use a biological treatment plant. Now this is the kind of thing that you could start talking about at 2015. New ways of actually cleaning water so that you are getting benefit out of them, that you are creating nutrients, you are, uh, you are liberating some of the forces which are really uh, very exciting to think about. Small-scale aerobic ponds with biodigesters that allow for biogas recovery not only remove deadly pathogens from the water, they produce affordable fuel, which can be used for cooking, and safe, cheap fertilizer. Minister Chen Li, how many biogas reactors do you have in China? 20 million, as I remember. All over Asia, all over the world, we are using biogas. We are, we, are fi we are finding how to take waste, how to take water, and how to m move this into energy production. Uh, membranes which can detaminate water in a single step are advancing and becoming less expensive. And the stunning rates of childhood diarrhea can be addressed if we start looking at the need to deal with wastewater in a way which is productive and safeguards the health of people and is also productive. The economic benefits that effective sanitation system could offer will be realized. In fact, a study released by the University of North Carolina found that if we measure the percentage of the global population lucky enough to have feces treated as a criteria for sanitation access, 3.5 billion people live with sanitation services, which mean we've got the other half of the world and a huge energy source and a huge, some problems to be solved, but some benefits to be realized. Water reuse is a challenge, but it's a challenge to which we're finding solutions from San Diego to Perth, to Amman, to Accra, to Edmonton, to Johannesburg. In all of those places, we are using reused water as energy sources or as cleaned up sources that are then used for horticulture, agriculture, and even in some places for drinking water. But since we only drink one and a half percent of the available water source, we can think of a lot of other uses for cleaned water first. The energy required, we also, we can also reduce the energy we currently use in moving water. This creates a lot of greenhouse gases. The energy required runs as high as 35 to 40 percent of many municipal energy bills. You would be astonished if you looked at your own city and found out how much the bill is for moving water around. More affordable systems may be decentralized, adapted to local conditions that are as small as possible and big as necessary are part of the answer. So does this mean we should be rebuilding the Italian water system today? No. It doesn't. Not today, but why not tomorrow? As different parts of it age and need to be replaced, why not start thinking of new ways to build the system? New installations and retrofits of older systems that need to be innovative, efficient, easier to operate and maintain. In short, the same innovative, smaller, modular systems that capture energy and clean water for the next appropriate use is part of the best answers for getting new water and for solving sanitation problems, whether north or south. As our acting, we know a whole paradigm shift now, and I think the Milan, the Milan 2015 could be a real contribution to this. As our acting chair noted, the board identified wastewater management as one of three objectives to those in the developing the post-2015 framework, but all the other speakers have really spoken about this, so I'm not going to repeat all of this. But we believe that the post-2015 discussion is a well-timed opportunity to recognize the linkages among wastewater, food, and energy, to get better at what we're doing, to apply new science, exciting science and techniques and technology to water reuse. It's time to recognize that better use and reuse is a vital resource for both northern and southern development is essential. We need to recognize the necessity to set goals for wastewater management and we were delighted to hear that Italy is keeping its eyes very open in terms of these goals. This is not the total answer for sanitation. In many rural areas, reuse potential may be very low. But when we're looking at the world, now more than a 50% urban world, when we're looking at the world that we actually live in, <clears throat> there are many problems for which reuse will be um, a very good part of the answer. 
It doesn't help open defecation. It doesn't help other things, but it could make an amazing difference. And it could be a very exciting topic to discuss in terms of the science, the technology, and the management that's needed. Ladies and gentlemen, take a moment to think about what we want the world's cities and towns to look like in the future. What are the communities we want our grandchildren and children to live in? A water use, water reuse revolution could help move the world towards a more sustainable future. And as well, as well as better and more water, it could privilege equity, good jobs, and clean environments. Those who are moving in this direction are using innovative pollution reduction, te pollution reduction technologies, energy saving, energy saving ideas, new financial packages, and expansion of wastewater management. Mr. DG, I would hope that some of this excitement might translate it to your, to, might commend itself to you as something to really talk about because 2015 is the beginning of the next phase internationally and you are going to be the gateway to that. Thank you very much for sharing our... Yeah, thank you. Bene, prima delle conclusioni del commissario per il suo 2015. Before we draw conclusions and we leave the floor to uh, Mr. Sala, we are now leaving the uh, floor to uh, to Mr. Bazzano, president of Feather Utility. Mr. Bazzano, the floor is yours. Authorities, ladies and gentlemen and colleagues, uh, it is with real pleasure that I'm taking the floor in this very interesting event of water and on behalf uh, of Feather Utility Italy, I would like to thank the organizers and Expo for having made uh, this event possible and uh, giving voice to water system companies. Uh, and uh, I would like uh, now to restrict a bit the horizon and perhaps more focus on uh, local uh, local agencies and the use we make and the disposal we make of wastewater, uh, whereas uh, I know that uh, the scope that was touched base by my colleagues was so much higher. So to start with, of course, I need to um, mention resolution of UN 2010, which recognizes uh, uh, access to drinking water amongst the fundamental human rights. And the eight objectives of development of the millennium that all the uh, states of UN in the year 2000 have committed to achieve by 2015. So um, availability of drinking water and reducing poverty and famine in the world uh, and this improvement of sanitation really stands at the base of this objective. The concept of water and sanitation, essential right uh, for mankind, it has been, uh, of course, uh, restored. Um, with, within the within the EEC, but should also be uh, precise, and I would like to um, also uh, mention that it is important uh, to ensure continuity and availability of drinking water, good quality, safe and control to all populations, and also guarantee collection, treatment, uh, and disposal of wastewater without provoking damage to the environment. This is a very uh, um, this is a very complex task uh, that also needs uh, uh, paramount uh, capital in order to uh, not only establish but also maintain uh, the needed uh, infrastructures to do the above, as well as uh, adequate tariffs uh, that make it still a sustainable uh, service. Uh, within the EC, within the EC, of course, all these concepts are very well acknowledged. In the year 2000, with uh, with uh, through the Water Framework Directive, the European Union commits all member states to reorganize the sector policies on the basis of a management of water service that it all that it that is integrated and organized by water catchment areas. It defines precise, accurate objectives for environmental quality, which are accurately monitored, and also disciplines the entire sector, amongst which the full cost recovery and the polluters pay principle, which is uh, crucial for an appropriate management of water services. Last 
November, the European Union, um, after long consideration and consultation, has published uh, a blueprint, which is a plan to safeguard water systems within Europe, and also deals uh, with topics related to the improvement over the use of soil, fighting against pollution of water, optimization, maximization of price policies, uh, increase uh, of management efficiency of resources and streamlining of governance of all bodies involved in the management of water resources. But talking more about the Italian case, if we look back at the 90s in Italy, we did start a very significant reform following Law Galli that was truly innovative. It was introducing principles such as uh, integrated management of uh, the water cycle, the water catchment areas um, to be managed um to be managed all over the territory, also to become uh, an important uh, uh, legacy for future generations, uh, and therefore an overall management vision of water services that should be integrated uh, both horizontally and vertically uh, and be managed by one unique manager. Such an import of the 90s uh, uh, was, uh, somehow, uh, was somehow changing throughout the way due to three main reasons, um, first of which being uh, conflict among the government and regions and the local bodies, as they were believing that they could not hold the authority that they needed. Also, different levels of infrastructure and organization of water service in a country that it is uh, developing uh, and uh, implement administration, uh, um, administration regulations in a very very differentiated way, especially thinking about the different north and south, and also due to some uh, um, legislative uh, directives and reforms, uh, they were mainly um, focusing on uh, on a dualism of public management versus public private management. Uh, with, a ongoing, uh, with an ongoing change between one and the other, as opposed uh, to, the, to focusing on the improvement uh, of the uh, quality of the services themselves. So getting stuck into debates as opposed to uh, thinking on how to improve the quality. Of course, uh, uh, certainty has originated by all this, which of course uh, stands as the main obstacle to the trust of investors uh, and inflow of capitals. Uh, and and then some uh, important verdicts of Supreme Court and also the abrogative referendum of June 2011 have uh, recently contributed to streamline uh, the regulation uh, um, some of the regulations uh, going back to the uh, importance of the equality of public private uh, also in uh, uh, the importance of determining and streamlining tariffs uh, for an integrated water service uh, and uh, mm, a very important step a positive step happened uh, um, through the and um, thanks to the independent authority uh, something that is existing as well for gas and electricity that has uh, improved, increased also the financial credibility of the sector. And uh, it now recognizes uh, efficient cost uh, on an actual basis, uh, but still it is not taking into account the financial needs uh, of the industry. Uh, such as it has, um, as it happened, uh, uh, it, the English regulator uh, of what, uh, both in England and in Wales. Uh, uh, also, financial need, this financial need that I'm talking about are very significant. We're talking about 65 billion of euros of investment, which are foreseen for the next uh, 30 years that have been already defined within the action plan. So far, we have achieved 
achieved the 50 percent of what it has been accrued, accrued for such investments. But unfortunately, such investments are not including costs referring to safeguarding protection of resources environment. I'm about to draw my conclusion now, hoping that the opportunity of Expo 2015 will allow us to tackle globally the problem of access to water and uh, feed the planet is actually one a portion of the headline and that means managing water resource entirely not only the 10 15 percent which is destined to human consumption which though it is uh, uh, let's say involving uh, it is uh, including and taking into account uh, and committing over 50 percent uh, of the debates nowadays as one of the first step of the utility has proposed uh, some minimum contributions still standardized, uh, which are close to almost 1% around the water tariff, as it has been accomplished already in other European countries in order to foster such objective. And this has become a bill recently, a bit of law. Um, and also, um, equally to what you know, uh, familiar, what you know to be very familiar has um, carbon footprint, which is calculating production of CO2 in the uh, production and consumption uh, of uh, goods and services. Also, we have uh, currently developed uh, the water footprint. We know, for instance, that we need 70 liters of water to produce uh, an apple and 135 liters for an egg and 200 liters for a glass, uh, uh, glass of milk or even um, 2,400 liters for an hamburger. Well, now we're currently using uh, some uh, some 6,300 liters per day per head, and this average is actually 1.65 uh, higher than the uh, than the global uh, average value um, European wise. And the Food and Agriculture Organization wants to remind us that the world is thirsty, be also because. Is, it is hungry. The occasion, the opportunity of Expo 2015 will allow us to tackle such uh, issues uh, on a, from a global standpoint. We're all committed to sustain such big effort uh, within uh, within Italy, of course, from an Italy standpoint. And we have uh, subscribed a document uh, recently, a collaboration uh, document, and all of the Lombardy um, companies are also widely involved from an operational perspective. It will be uh, very important then uh, to remind and to recall to everybody how important and how significant this appointment and opportunity will be. Now we have Giuseppe Sala, Expo Milan 2015 Commissioner. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, authorities, members of the advisory board, ladies and gentlemen. The last speaker has the moral and objective duty of being short, because before me you've heard several speakers talk. So I'll take some minutes uh, to weigh up uh, what Expo has done, and I will talk about the meaning uh, and connection between water and Expo. I believe that based upon uh, the previous speeches you've understood and broadly so that water is an issue that divides and unites and triggers water, uh, wars and it's a main concern. Honestly speaking, there's a lot around this issue. And the proof for us is that since we are organizing an expo that starts from the theme of nutrition, which undoubtedly is a crucial theme. At the end of the day, based upon our thoughts and based upon the thoughts of the participating countries, we believe that water is one of the most important elements based upon which we will have to discuss. Well, one fundamental point is what is Expo and what Expo do is Expo doing. We have a long history and World Exhibition started uh, over 
a hundred years ago, and the purpose is to provide knowledge. And if you think of it for a moment, I believe that many of the things we've heard today are for sure familiar to us. More often than not, we nod when we hear about things we know. But the problem is that changing the knowledge of things into actions and thoughts is quite another story because the United Nations on the one hand promote important meetings like this one and on the other hand maybe have not yet found the solution for facing such a delicate thing. You've heard Romano Prodi. He invited us to reflect on whether Milan can become the seat of a UN agency. Now then, our country and our city have important characteristics whereby water is a fundamental element. As you know, our city, the city of Milan, has been created upon water. It's the city of Leonardo. It's a city where water does play an important role in operational and evocative terms. You've heard Emma Bonino say that our country wants to play an active role. She's in favor of the possible sustainable development goals, including water targets and objectives. Before me, you've heard several speakers, for instance, our friend Margaret, who, talking about the Expo, said that the visitors of Expo are at the center of our work and of our attention. And what will they expect to hear? What will they expect to see? What stimuli will the visitors have? This is exactly what Expo has to do. This is what our country and other countries as well will have to do, i.e., when we proposed to the countries the theme of nutrition, we gave guidelines and then they've been free to select one peculiar aspect of the theme of nutrition and be present at the expo that will be architecture plus contents. What we see today is that the theme that raises more interest and that has gathered more consensus is the theme of water. So the reason why we are confident is that we already know what Expo will be, and we already know that uh, with respect to a theme that is very important, but with respect to which people are not aware, all of the countries will help us interpret the theme itself. We're asking participants to develop the theme of water based upon their own specific uh, geographical and biological areas, based upon their technological uh, excellences. And uh, from this point of view, each country has its own viewpoint, and each country has its own way of surviving by managing water. We've heard Minister Chen Lei, the Chinese minister, stress that water is by now one of the key elements of China. We have a number of countries that will be present in a cluster, the dry areas cluster, and they will speak about that. Having said all that, I'd like to say that on the one hand, we need to work on the preliminary stages with meetings like this. On the other hand, in those 180 days in Milan, there must be enough real space for debate and for learning and for having fun with respect to all that Expo brings with it. And at the end of the day, everything must go on beyond Expo. So our final effort and our commitment 
is geared towards water. And at the end of the day, all that we do for water should go on after 2015. We want to go on working over time. And the end of Expo should not be the end or the beginning. We should continue working on water. We should continue to collaborate with the board on water and sanitation. And by the way, this is one of our dearest collaborations, and this is one of the reasons why I'm quite glad of being here with you today in this important meeting, and hopefully we will continue working together up to and beyond 2015. Thank you. Bene. Thank you, Mr. Sala. Our works are now about to end. From today onwards, uh, we'll, be, we'll be having so many new occasions to meet up together and gather to speak about these important topics. Cocktail is waiting for you right outside this room. Enjoy. Bye-bye. <laughs>